man. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, we can do better than that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Got about five praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. That's what God has been good to you. You want to show some signs. Amen. My grandmother was here. She would say that any time that God blesses me to be on top of the ground, and the ground is not on top of me, that's just enough to give him some praise. I don't know what you have going on today. I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know what you're going through right now. But I do know that in spite of what's going on in your life, that God has still been good to you. Come on, we're going to try it again. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, y'all put your hands together.
Today is a good day to be in worship. God is good. God is faithful. God is high. And I've made up in my mind that whenever I come to worship, I come to give God some praise. Man is not what you're going through. Man is not what the situation is. I still can't be blessed. You may look at me crazy, but I still came to bless God. I still came to give God some praise. I had a crazy week. I don't know what this week coming up going to be, so what's the meantime? But I'm still in the desert right now. I'm still going to bless him. I'm still going to bless him because he's been good to me. I wish I had some witnesses here. I can't call you and I can't cry you. But God's been good to me. And because he's been good to me, Choose to bless him. Anybody else choose to bless him? All over the building, just begin to lift those hands. And we're going to worship God for a few minutes. And while worshiping God, we're not going to ask him for anything. But we're just going to tell him how much we love him. How much we adore him. How much we thank him for making way down the way. How much we thank him for opening doors that were closed and not failing.
down through the years, you have been good to us. And you're still good to us right now. Lord, we know that you are our everything. Not that you was our everything. Not that you used to be our everything. But you are everything right now. To this day, God, we owe you a praise. God, we owe you a thank you. God, we will bless you. God. Lord, somebody come to this church today for one thing. Some come for another. Lord, but whatever their needs and their deeds are, Lord. Lord, we know that you can meet them, Lord. Lord, and for that, we got to tell you thank you. We got to tell you thank you for our early rising this morning. We got to tell you thank you for our laying down last night. God, when we rose this morning, our bed was not our cooling board. And our sheep, Lord, it was not our winding chain. Lord, there's so much going on in the world, Lord. Lord, we got shooting all over the land. Lord, we got this virus still running rampant all over the land, Lord. We don't know why this is, why this is happening. Why this is going on. God, and we learn not to question you, God. God, we just gotta count your faith and keep and keep trusting in your, in, in your word and in your name. God, bless everyone that's here in this church right now, God. God, somebody might have came here with a bow down here. God, but you have the power. And you have the strength to lift their heads up, God, and to know that each day is a brand new start. God, we don't know when our time down here is going to be done on this earth, God. God, it could be any day, any minute, any second, any hour. God, but for each and every day that we have on this earth, Time is not promised to no man. God, but we're going to continue to praise you for all of our days. All of our days. We're going to praise you for all of our days, God. God, in one of these old days, when it's your time to call, and when it's our time to answer, give us a home somewhere in your kingdom where we might breathe out our life eternally unto you. In the almighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys and the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thy heart with me. I ride my staff and comfort me. And I prepare to take the full day in the presence of my enemies. Thou anoint my head with oil, my cup with the gold. Surely the goodness of the rest shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Thank God. We have a selection now for the choir. Praise God.
Revolution. We all do play a part. If you haven't said anything, you can participate in this part. It is offering time. Amen. Amen. If I was at my old church, we would say, Praise the Lord. It's offering time. Amen. Let us come on. We can practice again. It's offering time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible teaches us, Give and it shall be given unto you. A good measure pressed down and shaken together and running through. I don't know about you, but I'm in a season of my life now. Amen. I want God to bless me so much that my neighbors don't have more enough to receive. Amen. If you bless the God, the Bible says if you give a prophet in the name of a prophet, you shall receive a prophet's reward. So I want you to give today. Give out the abundance of your heart. Amen. If God will bless you. Pastor, I want you to understand that give to the kingdom of God so that the gospel can continue to go forth and the doors of the church can remain open for worship to help the community. If you have been blessed by the word of God, then you can give. If you want to give online, you can go to www.macedonianmbcmiami.org to give. Or if you want to text to give, you can text the number 833-457-0439. Or if you want to cash out, you can cash out the church with using dollar sign Macedonia NBC Miami. However you want to give, Give unto the Lord, and God will surely give back unto you. Let us bow our heads in word of prayer. God, we thank you, God, for these gifts that we're about to receive. God, bless those who want to give, those who have a desire to give, those who don't have to give. Help them to understand, God, there is a reality in serving a true and the living God. Bless some 36 and 100 fold, and we be sure, God, to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The ushers is going to guide you along the way while they get some money in the music. Around and as you give, amen. Say something to God. Man, shout out how good and God has been to you. And watch how God open up doors that you have never thought of opening your way. Amen. Amen.
Church, amen, where I serve as assistant pastor over there, my shepherd, Keith Butler, he is my pastor, amen, we thank God for each and every one of you, Mark chapter number 8, getting at verse number 22, there is a word from the Lord, I believe that God has a right now word for right now people, amen, God is going to bless somebody in here today, and I just need to say that if you want God to do a new thing, amen, then you need to participate in helping God bless you. Amen. Mark chapter 8, getting at verse 22. The King James Version says it like this. He coming to Bethsaida, bring a blind man to him, and besought him, and touched him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, he put his hands upon him, and he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly and he sent him away to his house saying, neither go in the town nor tell anyone in the town. Yeah. Grass may withers and the flowers may fade away but the word of our God shall stand forever. Yeah. May be seated in every presence. Of the Lord. I want to talk for a few moments, my brothers and sisters, in this subject of the Lord's help and your prayers. Touch me again. Do me a favor if you're not too anti social by looking at the neighbor on the left hand side and say, Neighbor, touch me again. 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 Touch me again.
touch me again. That was the wrong neighbor. Look at the neighbor on the other side. Say, neighbor, I dare you to touch me again. Now come on and put those blessings together for what the Lord is giving you today. Have you ever had any mountains that you could climb? Ever had any rivers that you could cross or even find yourself going through a tunnel that you couldn't tunnel through? God specializes in things that seem impossible. And he can do what no other powers can do. Brothers and sisters, I come to understand that in this thing called life, life has its way of wearing us down. Grandma Mun said it like this, if you keep on living, you keep on putting one foot in front of the other, you're going to encounter some type of storm. And I stop by to tell somebody today, if you've never had no storm arise in your life, then you keep on waking up on top of the ground and the ground that's not on top of you. You're going to find some type of storm. And as we come to this second quarter of this year of 2021, brothers and sisters, you probably perhaps have ran across folk that don't even like you. Ran across some folk that don't like you just because of who you are. Character of your name, the car you drive, the children that you have, the church that you go to, the pastor that you have, the suckers that you live in. Some folk will not like you for some of the craziest things in the world. But can I just throw this nugget at you for a very moment? You got to be very careful of how you treat those folk you think don't have anything. Because the same ones you treat that you think you have anything, God will simply place them right back before your eyes. You won't have to see them again, and you will come to the realization it's going to take more than joy on this one. I wish I had about five witnesses in the house that can testify that preacher, you told me because I had some folk to leave me when I was down and out. When I had one thing, when everything was going well, I can count up the friends that I had, but as soon when I was broke, busted, and disgusted down, and I didn't have nobody to call them, nobody knew my God, uh, think about it and tell somebody. You gotta be very careful who you call your friend. Yeah, it's those same ones that you call your friend only to find out that when you need them, their phone number has been disconnected. Yeah, those so-called friends are only be with you. Watch this. As long as they know you have everything that they need. But as soon as they come to realize that your bank account is beginning to get low, as soon as they come to discover that your credit score is not where it's supposed to be, that's when you really find out who your true friends are. Really and some of y'all need to understand, need to come to the grips that you gotta escort some folk from the VIP section of your life to a regular seat. Yeah, that season of my life is over with now, and I'm going to a new dimension and where God has taken me. You can't go with me. Then you can touch me again. That's why every hand can touch you. You gotta be very careful when you let pray for you. Yeah, because some folk ain't P R A Y on you. Some folk is just P R E Y I N G. They're praying that you fall back. I dare you to touch me again. Touch me again. So called Christians. People that go to church Sunday after Sunday say they love God, that everything going to be Sunday, Sunday, but what you do on Monday through Saturday? Where's your prayer like Monday through Saturday? I, what are you talking about that sister that look like you and I? Well, what makes you think that you're so better than them? Because somebody had to pray for you for you to get the way you are. Don't you think that you are better than anybody else? Because the same pedestal that you are on, watch this, God will knock you down so far on your back to where the only place you can look is up. You gotta be very careful of who you call your friend. Careful. Who you call. Thing called life. Life can knock you down to your knees. Life can have you depressed at night. Life can have you wanting to commit suicide. Life can have you talking back to the same folk that God has sent to bless you. Life has its way of knocking us down. Oh, I come to realize. 
realize about us black folk is that the only time we can give God praise is when things are going well in our life. When we got it all together, when God put a little money in our pocket, when God pays our bills, when God blesses our children, guess what? Watch this. We don't know how to acknowledge God. The only time that we can acknowledge God is when things are not going well in our life. But God is like the Verizon Wallace commercial. He said, can you hear me now? Yeah, it had to take for me to throw a pandemic in the land. For me to get your attention. Some of y'all and gave God praise all year long. And you're wondering why God is not blessing you with the next thing. Watch this. It's because you haven't probably thanked him for the last thing. That he took a pandemic to get your attention. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, if my people, which I call by my name, will just humble themselves, not going off every time somebody tries you. Or when you think that things are not going away, you go, God said you gotta humble yourself. Let them talk about you. Let them scandalize your name. Let them call you everything. For the child of God, humble yourself. I don't care what they say about you, it's not what they call you, but it's what you answer to. You humble yourself. The problem with all of us is that we're trying to fight battles that God told us not to fight. He said, Be still, I'll fight your battles. He said, Of my people, which are called by my name, will just humble themselves. Watch this. Not only do you got to humble yourself, but you got to humble yourself and pray. Lord have mercy. Humble yourself and pray. Watch this. But you got to turn away from your wicked ways. And there's too many wicked folk in the house of God today. We got too many wicked people that guess what? The only time you're giving God praise is when your name is called, when they sing a your song, when you got the mic, but you don't want to give God praise for somebody else. Turn away from your wicked ways. He said, Then when I come back, I will forgive your sins. I will come back and heal the land. That's why we're so messed up today. Because we want to do things our way. We ain't worried about the sight of God because we got some friends that don't, we don't want them to understand the type of God that we serve. There's too many cliques in the church. Too many folks want to be a pastor. You want to tell a pastor how to pastor. You want to tell leaders how to be. But what about you? What are you doing? If you want to make God's house better, why don't you go participate? I don't understand. Folks have the Holy Ghost. And they've given God praise that we have to go and touch them to get them off the floor. But you don't know all the hell that they've been through. They've given God praise because they want God to do a new thing. They call hell all week long just to come in here and sit next to a sedated neighbor for you not to say amen. Well, guess what? If you ain't going to say amen, don't you hear the name. You don't know what God has done for that person. We don't know why they're giving God praise. We, we, we don't understand the breakthrough that God has given to them. Touch me. Touch me again. Let me just tell you, while I was a youth pastor at Friendship, back in church under the leadership of Gaston Smith, one of my young men came and shared with his testimony with me about how God has blessed him to acquire the funds necessary to address a child support delinquency. He was excited not only about how God has moved in his life, he had not acquired those funds, he would be facing time in jail. And so God has moved once again upon his life to acquire the funds to face this child support delinquency. So he goes down and he addresses the issue. He walks into the office. He, he gets to the office just a couple of minutes later. Before he was about to close the office, but they sent him down 
to another administrative office since they were still open in that area to address that leprosy. Thanks to the second office, he pays this leprosy. Watch this because I'm going to work. But by his surprise, they detained him. They kept him unannounced. And unannounced, even in the process of paying the delinquency, they required him to surrender all of his belongings and submit to a drug alcohol test and a background check. While the test came back, they held him to those results of the test and background check came back. Then about an hour or two, they released him and returned all of his belongings. They released him and he shared his story with me with mixed emotions. Because watch this, on one hand, he's elated that God has moved once again in his life to provide for him those funds that he needed. But on the other hand, he's frustrated. He's frustrated, brothers and sisters. He explained to me, he said, I never expected, watch this, that after paying the price, that he will have to go through a process. Lord have mercy. And he said to me, he said, Pastor, I had the money. I had the money right here in my hand. I went down to pay the price. Not knowing that even after paying the price, watch this little end, that he still had to go through a process. I don't know who I'm talking to in Macedonia today, but might I remind you that just because the price has been paid does not mean that you're exempt from going through the process. The good news, brothers and sisters, is that the process is not for your freedom, but the process is in your freedom. Y'all can help me put you here? Such as the discipline that is discovered here in Mark chapter 8, in which this story reminds us that God often subjects us to a process, even after the price has already been paid. I wish I had a witness in this house that could help me preach, because he has already paid the price on Calvary. He's already shed his blood that you and I might be free from the wrath of sin. God, even now and then, he still subjects us to a process. And let me encourage somebody in here today and tell somebody that just because you're going through a process, Lord have mercy, does not mean that your devotion from the divine will be defeated. Lord have mercy. It does not mean that you're going to have some faults and some failures in your life. That's where the word faith comes in. Word faith simply suggests to us faith is false and forsaken all I trust him. That's what faith is. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and of a sound mind. And that word fear is just false evidence of you and real. That's where that word fear is. And watch this. God can't give you favor before he activates your faith. God has to put you in an uncomfortable situation so that you can activate your faith. Yeah, if I gave you everything that you need, what would the world be? Imagine if everybody in this world were just like me. What type of world would you be? That God has to put you in an uncomfortable situation so that you can activate your faith. Just because you're going through a process does not mean that it's the devil. Let me just remind you that sometimes some of the stuff that you have going on in your life doesn't necessarily be the enemy. But sometimes it can be the inner me. And if you can stop the inner me from thinking that every time you go through something that's the enemy, that's attacking the enemy and got no control over your life. Because what God does is if you let the enemy come in and attack you, it simply suggests to us that he has already given you the tools that you need to come out with the enemy. Preach that, boy. I'm trying to do Sex to us that sometimes you could be going through the process, watch this, because God has you in steps and stages. Lord have mercy. I don't know who this word is for this morning, but just because it hasn't happened in your life or the right timing in your life doesn't mean that God isn't working on your behalf. And I know this word might sound contemporary to somebody in here that we preach 
this gospel that we look at, our TV brothers that tell us to name it, claim it, hold it, call it, walk around seven times to the other sometime. God doesn't answer your prayer. Sometimes he don't answer your prayers right on time. Sometimes we can get up in our pulpits and we can preach sermons that say that God is a right now God. But I want to talk to about 20 good folk. I'll make number 21 who can testify that God hasn't always been a right now God. He hasn't always been a right now God in your life, but sometimes God was a next week God. Sometimes he was a next Friday God. He was a next month God. He was a next year God. He was a 20 year later God. Just because you got right now God don't mean God to answer your prayer right now. But Watch 
this. Mark, my brothers and sisters, Mark records the shortest biography on our Lord Jesus Christ. Mark, the theme thesis of this book is to describe and to discuss that Jesus not as the Son of God, but as the Son of Man. He's the servant of humanity, and he addresses to the Roman Gentiles. He addresses the Roman Gentile audience, and because this audience is Gentile, he does not spend a lot of time on Jewish. Mark is like a kid in a candy store who gets straight to the point. He floods this book with 19 miracles before Jesus Christ is the Lord of the gospel. Mark, in his thesis of this sacred, he's described to us that Jesus just as the Son of God, but the Son of Man. And in documenting his course with humanity, Mark sets these miracles at a certain frequency, certain pace and pause, and Mark in the gospel of the word redundant. It is the word straightway and sometimes immediately. Watch this. Let me help you for a moment. Mark chapter 1, verse 18. Jesus stopped by the Sea of Galilee and retired some fishermen and recruited some to be his disciple. And the Bible says that the next what Jesus put in, they followed Jesus. What? Immediately. Mark chapter 1, verse 31. Jesus stopped by Simon's mother in law house who suffered with a fever. And Jesus steps into the house and addressed the fever. And the Bible says that the fever left immediately. Mark chapter 1 verse 42, there is a man who is suffering with leprosy. And the Bible says that after Jesus has spoken to the leprosy and the leprosy was cleansed, what? Immediately. Mark chapter number 2 verse 12, Jesus is in an undisclosed house and it's crowded and, and a man who, who has called, he breaks down, he breaks down the roof in front of Jesus and the Bible says that the palsy was cleansed what? Immediately. Mark chapter number 5 verse 29 is a woman suffering watch this with an issue of blood. The Bible says that Jesus pulled the hem of him and when she pulled the hem of him the Bible says that her fountain dried up what? Immediately. Mark chapter 5 Verse 42, there's a little girl whose father name was Jairus. And she dies while walking on the highway. And Jesus gets to Jairus' house, walks into the house, and she had just died and says, to lock up a comma. What simply means, daughter arise. And the Bible says that she arose what? Immediately. Mark chapter number 7, verse 35, there is a man who's dead. And the blind, and the Bible says that Jesus unstops his plug ears. And he was able to hear what? Immediately. Mark chapter number 10, verse 2. Jesus encounters blind bodies on a road leading out of Jericho. And the Bible says he received his sight immediately. But in the midst and the center of all this immediate post, it's this story. And Mark chapter number 8, that you and I have read today, that did not happen immediately. It is a comment to Mark's gospel that because everything has been happening immediately, that Mark chapter number 8, verse 20 through 26 is Mark's gospel. And because it is a one time thing, it did not happen immediately. But it happened in steps and stages. And while this miracle is rare to Mark's gospel, many scholars suggest that it's the most realistic of our reality because the truth of the matter is, God doesn't do it all the time immediately. So while you're sitting in church today, let me just remind some of you that you do need to take your medicine. You need to stop talking about you waiting on the Lord to do it for you. No, baby, you need to pray and go see your doctor at the same time. Because as a matter of fact, some of y'all need therapy and see God at the same time. Look at your neighbor and say, touch me again. I need Jesus and therapy all at the same time. Because as much as I want God to do it immediately, he has not always been an immediate God. 
but it's going to subject you to a process that requires steps and stages. Have I got a witness in here? Where are my people who can testify that I don't have an immediate testimony? I had to go from one doctor to the next doctor. I had to go from one counselor to the next counselor. I had to go meet with one pastor to deal with my situation and deal with my enemies all at the same time because God has not always done it immediately. God takes us through steps and stages. Just because of steps and stages doesn't mean that Jesus has nothing to do with it. Lord have mercy. He says, when I subject your steps and stages, first thing you need to do is, watch this, you need to appreciate your facilities. Lord have mercy. The Bible says, verse number 22, and they brought him to Jesus. Some of y'all missed it. I'll try it one more again. Bible says in verse number 22, and they brought him to Jesus. This miracle is initiated and launched through a ministry. Watch this. The evangelistic, they brought him to Jesus. So the good news is, is that this is a ministry of evangelism. Through the ministry, watch this, they identify themselves, watch this, as the anonymous they. Watch this because I'm going somewhere. This ministry anonymous day. They aren't people who start rumors around the church. But they start restoration. And they brought the blind man to Jesus. Watch this ministry perfect. First and foremost, we got to thank God that somebody knows how to get to Jesus even when we can't find him. I wish I had help in this house. Y'all want to let me preach? He says, and they brought him to Jesus. The anonymous lady. Watch this. They care more about making a difference than they do with making a name. Because watch this. You walking around wearing somebody else's name, but you don't even know your own name. You walking around in somebody else's creativity, but you ain't creating nothing for yourself. Going, getting broken, and all trying to get an outfit just so you can look good so somebody else can talk about you, but you ain't even creating nothing for yourself. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you gotta put some respect on my name. God said, I'm a head and not the tail. He said, I'm above and not beneath. I'm a leader and not the bottom. Put some respect on my name. No, it is not your contemporary sermon. I got to give it to you the way God gave it to me. He says to them, we don't know the names of these people because all they care about is giving this man to Jesus. Lord, I must just get ready to mess somebody up. I'm glad I can leave here and go back to Logos because somebody is getting ready to get messed up. God deliver us from people who can't serve unless their name has to be called. God, you, you got to deliver us from people who only want to serve just so they can get some type of attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah some people, people only want to serve unless their name is on a plaque, their name is on a window, their name is on a pew. But God, deliver us from people that cover the altar with prayer just to get some type of personal attention. You're preaching that. You're preaching that. You're saying something that. Leave us from those folks. Let's make a church out of a fashion show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Sunday after Sunday, you can't worship God and have a nasty attitude at the same time. You say you love that sister, but you can't wait to get out of church to get on the telephone. Child, you don't have a pastor Billy in there preaching. We don't know who this hood guy looking at. I know when some of us walk in here, y'all look at who is these guys. You look at me, it's the legs, and you see those dreads on his head, so you just him, judge him face on how he look. Y'all look at me and see all these those, and if I didn't have a shirt on, you see all these tattoos too, and say, you a preacher? But it's not what they call you, it's what you answer to. Look at Keith Henderson on 
You let him sit there and say he just got to be hood. Came out of the chain gang. But let me just tell you that God takes the worst of us to bring the best out of us. Worst of us to bring the best out of us. Sometimes the real sermons you need to hear is from some folk that have been through some stuff. Yeah, I don't want nobody to come and talk to me. You ain't with me. But I wish I had some folk in the house that said when you was down and out, I wasn't nobody there to help you. But God showed up in the nick of time. They see the glory, but they don't know the story. But I serve a God who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask for a thing. I wish I had my Bible. Give God praise. I raise it. Amen. But yet, yet would I trust him. Says, I'm going to take you through steps and stages. Sometimes, the real smoke that God uses is smoke that look like us. I don't care about those smoke that come with Sunday suits on. Because you can have on a three-piece suit and still bust here while open. But I'd rather go to heaven in a three-piece suit than to go to hell in a three-piece suit. I wish I had somebody here that said, you see the glory, you don't know the story. But when you see me praising, when you see me giving God praise, it's because I have been through some stuff. I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. But God gave me another chance. He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. I got to do some activity in my name. Ain't it all right? Won't he do it? Won't he pick you up? Turn your own. Now sit in the chair. Text us. Steps. I'm stages. That's why when I'm up here worship. I wish I would have had the tacos in the day because my worship is real. Come on. Yes. When I'm up here worshiping, yes. Yes. I want nobody to touch me. Because when I was laying on that floor, after being shot seven times, looking at my bed of affliction, when I told God I'd give you the rest of my life, but I was still out there doing my thing. And God said, I gotta turn my face away from you so you can get to know who I really am. He said, I gotta take you through some stuff. I'm going to hide my face away from you. But I wish I had a witness in here that knows the God that I'm talking about. That when I was down and out, nobody was cold on me. Family talked about me. Friends called me everything but a child of God. But I began to call upon the name of Jesus. And from the wall, he lifted me. He lifted me. Well, you get up and go to work on Monday morning. 
what you think of is full of hypocrites. But if you find a broken church, don't you join it because you're going to miss hell. God's church is nothing but a hospital. Folk are sick coming here to be healed. And when they call upon the name of Jesus, when we get together and pray and call on the name of Jesus, then demons have to flee. I don't know what you're going through, but somebody's going through something they was just about to give up. He was on the verge of throwing in the towel. That child just won't act right. Your spouse just acting crazy. But I need you to put prayer on it. When you put prayer on it, prayer still works. When you say, Pastor, what is prayer? Prayer is still a blood of Jesus. If you don't want to call on anything else, just touch your spouse. I say the blood still works. Touch your children. I say the blood still works. Touch your eyes. I say the blood still works. Because it was his blood that scared Calvary. It was his blood that got me where I am today. Because the blood still works. So their ministry was to bring people to Jesus. Some of y'all in here right now, I'm getting ready to tell all your business. Because you don't want anybody to know. But we're going to rebuke this bougie spirit in the name of Jesus. Some of y'all can tell the truth that you are where you are right now because the people that helped you, we don't even know their names. We don't know where they are, we don't know what car they drive, we don't know their name, but it was somebody that your grandmama and your granddaddy and your pastor helped you get to where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Watch this, coming to a close. Get ready, Lonnie, we get ready to hit home. Next time you go to the airport, watch this, let me paint the picture for a minute. Next time you go to the airport, get there a little bit early. Because when you sit and stare out the window, this little white truck is going through with the airplane. Yes, yes. You're getting ready to get on. Yes. Here's what you will find. This plane that you're getting ready to get on, it flies about 700 miles per hour. It holds so many tons of gas. It can get across the country in a matter of minutes. It can fly. Watch this. But here's the problem. The plane can't roll backwards. So they got this little white turd truck that hooks up to the front of the plane, pushes the plane off so it can fly. Some of y'all missed it. This little white turd truck hooks up to the front of the plane, pushes the plane off so it can take off. Watch this, the plane can't take off if it wasn't for this little white turd truck. We don't know who drives that little turd truck. We will never know that name. We will never know the person that drives the little white turd truck. But if it wasn't for that little white turd truck, that plane will never take off. I want to talk to about five people in the house today that you got some of the white turd trucks in your life. That if it wasn't for those little white turd trucks, you will never be the way you are today. Somebody ought to thank God that you got some of the white turd trucks in your life. And I'm not where I am by myself. But I had somebody who was in a white little turd truck to push me off to get me to where I am today. The text says, watch this, they brought the blind man to Jesus. They touched him. First thing he did was Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him away. Lord have mercy. I'm going to try this one more again. They brought the blind man to Jesus. Jesus takes the blind man by the hand and leads him away. They brought the blind man to Jesus. Some of y'all still in Castro. Jesus takes the blind man by the hand and leads him away. Blind man they brought to Jesus. So watch this. 
First thing, first of all, when you bring somebody to Jesus, you can't tell Jesus how to handle them. I want you to have this in this house. Because it can be, watch this, oh, have mercy. Because while it is that Jesus touches him, leads him away, it's highly possible, watch this, that Jesus uses you to bring that person to him so he can deliver them from you. It can be that Jesus is using you to bring that person to him so that he can deliver them from you. Look at you sitting there with your mouth that amen saying, Sarah, you just ready for me to get up in addiction so you can go back out and do the very same thing you did before you walk in silent church. But I wish I had some witnesses that know that if it wasn't for that little white prayer truck that led me on the way, that I wouldn't be where I am. Jesus took them by the hand. So he could deliver them from them. Jesus. Jesus takes them by the hand. Sometimes God wants to use you to bring some people to him to try to deliver them from you. It's a Bible us that we have not because we ask it. That if we ask, it shall be given. If we seek, we shall find. But if we knock the doors, shall be open. I don't know about you, but I serve a God who shall supply all of my needs. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for me, in my little black little heart, that God took and dipped deep down in his red blood, and I came up white in the snow. That's why you got to be very careful while you talk about me. You gotta sweep around your own front door before you try to sweep around mine. If my grandmother's here, she will just pay. And he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me that I am his own. And the joy was sad. Why would tell me that? None of us has ever known. Before I leave here, I gotta tell you about a story about a doctor and the same. No matter the outcome, no matter the circumstance, this nurse will find herself singing, dancing, and giving praises unto God. It was one morning that she came in, started singing Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And a doctor will ask her, Say, nurse, tell me, nurse, this God that you sing about, can you see this God? She said, no, I can't see this God. He said, it's God that you sing about. Can you touch this God? She said, no, I can't touch this God. She said, but enough about me, doctor. She said, tell me, doctor, when your patients come to you and tell you that they have pain, she said, tell me, doctor, can you see? their pain. He said, no, I can't see their pain. She said, tell me, doctor, when they come to you and tell me that they have pain, can you touch their pain? He said, no, I can't touch their pain. She said, well, how do you know they have pain? He said, because they tell me they feel the pain. She said, well, that's all I'm trying to tell you about my Jesus. I can't see my Jesus, but I so can feel them all over me. She said, I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, I'm tied up to the Lord. Good evening, I said, Norma. May the Lord bless you with your blessing. But if you miss me, come pitch it down here. And you can't find me nowhere. Come on up. You the Lord with me. I'll be waiting up there. Because I serve a God who's going to work it out for my good. He said, no, that's for me. Yet when I trust him, I'm going to trust him the name of Jesus. Because Jesus, who died on Calvary's cross, he was put in a bar tour. But my grandmother told me that anything borrowed needs to be returned. So he gave it back. But I tell you, one private night, 
Amen. Be right back. Same time with Pastor Benedict Sunday. Those who are inside worship, thank you for coming out and hearing the word of the Lord. Because no matter who's preaching, God's word can get out. It shall not be turned to a fall. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, our Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, and our hearts have felt today. Thank you for your word, God. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light upon our pathway. We hide these words in our heart that we might not sin against thee. God, we declare today, God, that we might be facing something on tomorrow. But help us to carry your word. Help us to understand, God, that with you all things are possible. Without you, nothing is possible. We might have run into some folk that's going to get on our nerves. Folk try to remind us of the person and places we used to go rather than try to get us to a point in the area of our life where adds of a close release of relationship with God. Help us to activate our faith even when we don't feel like activating it. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling, who set us follows for the presence of his glory with that same joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. In Jesus' name, it is done. It is so. 